Okay. Uh, my name is Boyan Kotsev and together with my friend Johannes Schauer, we work together on a project within the scope of the course Automation and Control to develop different uh, robot motion control algorithms. Uh, in the first part, we focused on developing algorithms that will uh, control a robot equipped with a differential drive so that we make the robot go to a target location or make it follow a certain trajectory. In the second part, we solved the inverse kinematics problem for the KUKA KR6 robot arm. In the end, we were able to move the empty vector of the robot arm along a straight line in the simulation. So, the first thing I'm going to talk about is how to drive the robot to a goal location. So, imagine now you have the robot somehow standing over here. And for the sake of simplicity, I just draw the coordinate axis. And this is X and this is Y. And so, here is the robot facing the front in the X direction. And what we want to do is to make the robot go to a target location. Not only the position, but also the orientation. So imagine now, you want to make the robot come here. So that it faces this direction, and this is now our X in the goal frame, and our Y in the goal frame. While here is the world frame, where we start. And the idea is now to track the location of the robot, and use a controller while we are moving, so that we make the robot go to the target location. In order to make this happen, we incorporated the famous algorithm by Giovanni in Tiveri from Italy, uh, which is capable of computing the linear and angular velocities that should be set to the robot, so that once it starts from this starting position, it goes for sure to the goal location. And how that happens is we use ROS-based odometry feedback that is passed to the Giovanni controller, which in the end uh, provides us with the linear and angular velocities, and at the end the robot will just go from here to here. So one thing that we need to take into account is the fact that the Giovanni algorithm, like the control algorithm, assumes that uh, it will take the robot to the zero zero location, meaning the frame that we define as a goal frame is the one that the Giovanni algorithm works in. So this is zero, 00 for Giovanni. And for us, our rosodometry feedback assumes that we track the robot motion in the world frame. So there is something in between that we need to take into account. We need to build a matrix that is capable of transforming each location and orientation from this frame to this frame. And we're going to call this matrix like T from wor world frame to goal frame, which is going to be a homogeneous matrix, meaning it's going to have a rotation component and a translation. And once we have rosodometry feedback, we just use this matrix to transform the pose of the robot from this frame to this frame, and then give this as an input to the Giovanni control algorithm, which will give us the linear and angular velocities that we set to the left and right uh, wheel of the robot. And this way, we make sure that each time we have a robot standing here, it will go to zero, zero. So, as we already mentioned, we have an algorithm to drive the robot from a certain location to another one, from start to goal. But the next step would be to make the robot follow a certain trajectory. And imagine now, this is the trajectory that the robot should follow meaning it starts initially here, facing this direction, and it comes here. In order to make this possible, we just discretize this location accordingly, and think of each point as a separate target. And what we do is, at each point in time, we have a current goal. And at this point in time, we have a transformation matrix with respect to the world frame, which is the start one, starting frame, and the transformation is from this world frame to the current goal. 
So there is no single goal, but current goal with respect to this point in time. And as we have this transformation matrix, we still do the same thing. We have rosodometry feedback, and we use this transformation matrix to transform the current pose with, with uh, like in the goal frame, and we pass this information to the Giovanni control algorithm. The important thing is that as we approach the current goal, and we think of it as we have approached the goal enough, close enough, we replace it with the next one. And we compute a new transformation matrix with respect to the new goal, and we do the same thing over and over again. One important fact is that we preserve the speed along the path to be constant. Because we do not want the robot to be like speeding in the beginning and slowing down. Speeding up and slowing down, this will be not smooth and we don't want that. And we eliminate that by preserving the speed to be constant. And this algorithm proved to be good enough to drive the robot along any trajectory that is bounded in curvature because the robot cannot just drive any trajectory. And we assure that the robot goes forward all the time. The algorithm that we presented for following a certain trajectory, though experimentally we witnessed that the algorithm is good enough and it follows the trajectory. But, theoretically speaking, there is no proof that will assure that this algorithm will always converge to the given trajectory. In order to provide this feature or make this happen all the time and be sure that it's happening, we are incorporating the extension of Giovanni Indiveri and Maria Letizia from 2004, which actually took into consideration this uh, kind of drawback. What are they doing is the following. Imagine now you have this trajectory that you want to follow. And at each point in time, what are they measuring is the following. The robot standing here, uh, you have like the location of the robot and you project this point uh, orthogonally on the path. And once you find this point on the path, what you're doing is you actually measure this distance. We call it L. And exactly at this point P, you compute the tangent on the path and we call it theta D. And also we have orientation of the robot, like the actual orientation, we call it theta. And what are they trying to minimize with their new algorithm is the difference between theta and theta d, which they, hold, they call theta hat. And also they want to make the distance L go to zero. And having these two kind of uh, values, theta hat and L, this is like the space in which the actual extension of this Giovanni control algorithm works. And they prove that this algorithm will always converge, meaning will go, will make theta hat and L go to zero, zero. This algorithm is shown to be always converging to zero, zero, I mean, asymptotically, by the so-called Lyapunov asymptotically stable aerodynamics. And with this law, mathematically, they managed to prove that their developed new algorithm will always converge to zero, zero. Our second project was to solve the inverse kinematics problem for the KUGA KR6 robot arm. We solved the problem by using a geometric approach. We reduced the upper part of the arm into a 2D problem that we could easily solve, and then extend the solution by transforming it into a 3D problem using the lower half of the KUGA KR6 robot arm. The graph on the left hand side shows a simplified drawing of the KUGA KR6 robot arm directed along the x-axis of the base frame. The robot arm can now freely move in the two-dimensional xy plane. To calculate the values of the joint angles q1 and q2 from the Cartesian input coordinates x and y toward which the end effector should be moved, the formulas on the right are used. Since the robot is also able to turn around the y-axis, the previous solution is extended using a cylindrical coordinate transformation. 
The angle theta represents the rotation of the base joint around the y-axis. The angles Q1 and Q2 are calculated in the same fashion as in the 2D case after transformation of the Cartesian input coordinates. The final closed form solution from this inverse kinematics problem can be seen on the right hand side. This enables us to move the robot arm to any given three-dimensional Cartesian point. By moving the robot arm to consecutive points, movement along a straight line was achieved. Okay, I start recording. So we drive the robot from this point exactly here to position 5 meters, 5 meters, which is, as we measured, it's the goal directly here. centimeters. Okay, well you can start now any time. Will it hit the pot? <laughs> and do it! Take out the pot! <laughs> that was the extra action. Look, this time the video will not be 20 minutes. <laughs> you mean it's going right because of the obstacle? <laughs> Oh. Oh. No. Cool. This is obstacle over it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we presented uh, different robot motion control algorithms and we managed experimentally to show that our developed algorithms are capable of making the robot go to a target location or follow a curvature bounded trajectory. Additionally, we showed that the inverse kinematics problem for the Kuga KR6 robot arm can be solved by a geometric approach. And last but not least, we would like to invite all students to apply to Jacobs University and specifically to our computer science smart systems program and certainly take this course because they will love it.